Hello everyone, this is the CRT Productions and this is a bunch of old computer parts from eBay and Facebook Marketplace. So this is a video I've had planned for quite some time now. Um, you've already seen the graphics card in the video before with me dusting it out. It was really dusty when I got it. If you've been in the Discord, you'll have known that I've been working on this for a couple months now, I believe. I have all the parts here for a nice little retro build. So let me get into that. So what I'm trying to capture with this video is not only a 2008-2009 era PC build, but sort of a mid-range budget type build. Usually when you see people do these kinds of videos with a retro build, you'll see them pick the absolute top of the line parts. But what I'm basically doing here is just trying to do sort of a mid-range build. Um, so that said, let's uh, see what parts I've got here. So for the motherboard, I've got an 8-bit IP35 Pro off-limits extreme um, monster truck um, motherboard. I'm not sure what the monster truck has to do with it. Um, it's a P35 motherboard, of course. And that's actually from around 2007. Uh, originally, I was aiming for 2008 with this uh, parts list, but a couple things kind of pushed it more towards 2009. There was the P35 and above that the X38. So not top of the line but um, a nice motherboard. Sort of what you would pick if you were going for a mid-range build in 2007 or 8. Of course we have a little bit of RAM to put on that motherboard. This is some Corsair XMS2 um, VDR2. Um, just, you know, it's RAM. And uh, the way I look at it is pretty much exactly like that. It's just RAM. This is 4 gigabytes, so that will run nicely for our 2008 um, things. Now we have a hard drive here. Uh, this is the only thing I was not able to get in original packaging, but whatever. It's a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar drive. Pretty nice. And another relatively boring part of the build. The power supply. I was actually originally not planning on getting a power supply especially for this build but uh, I actually ended up finding this at Goodwill uh, just right when I was starting to get the parts in for this build and it was pretty funny. It's of course non-modular. This is a cheap old power supply thermal take. Uh, what is it? A TR2430W. It was made for many years um, starting in like 2005, I think. Uh, moving on from that, we've got Intel Core 2 Duo. Oh, it's a 45 nanometer. Um, what is this? It's an E8400, I believe. And it's a dual core, Core 2 Duo. If you were building a budget build in 2008, chances are you would have probably considered the E8400. But a lot of people, of course, went for the quad cores. Pretty expensive though. That brings me to a good topic that I know a lot of people have a lot of questions about. Why am I a person that obviously wasn't building computers in 2008 or 2009? Um, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? I just um, basically find it interesting to go back and look at these old parts, you know, stuff that I would have never gotten a chance to build um, when it was new. So I'm just traveling back in time and doing it anyway. So, there you go. By the time you're watching this, it's already been done anyway, so uh, moving on to the next part. We have one of these really radical uh, Zalman CNPS 9700 coolers. Um, there's a million different uh, variations of these. This one's brand new in the box. The packaging's kind of hard to get into, but you can see it. Um, there it is. The Gigabyte GTX 260. This was something that, uh, you know, I got it because it had the box and it was in good shape. Uh, if you were building a budget build back in 2008, you would have really gotten a Radeon graphics card. Um, but that's, uh, this is how it goes with eBay sometimes. You gotta find what you can find. This 260 is, uh, it was, a uh, it was an option for you. Um, but it was a little on the pricey side, and then as a mid-range card, um, 
This is also from 2009, so that's why I kind of had to bump my uh, like approximated um, number on the year up a little bit. My, my uh, ballpark estimate of when this build would be from. Um, but yeah, there it is. Very nice and clean, I might add. So, strangely enough, the part that I've been looking forward to the most here is this old case getting it out of this box. Uh, as you can see, the box is still sealed. Um, I bought this on Facebook Marketplace, um, paid way too much for it, but I just thought it was so cool. Um, if you're not aware, older computer cases are ridiculously hard to find for some reason. Nobody's selling their old computer cases. I don't know what happens to old computer cases, but you hardly ever find any. And uh, to find one still sealed, um, this one's from around 2009, 2010. Um, it's hard to tell, but basically I was going to take what I could get with the case. Anyway, I'm ready to open this thing up and see how it has fared over the last decade plus in this box. And uh, I'm sure it is ready to be unboxed and built in. Um, <laughs> Let's see, uh, what can I say about this really, I mean, I love new old stock stuff, um, and this is new old stock stuff, computer stuff, like that, let's see if I can get this box open without destroying it, there it goes, we're just about done, there it is. Alright, put that down, okay, now then, oh man, oh, man, that's a smell, alright, that's a smell I will never forget, oh, mostly because I've smelled it many times before, okay, let me see how am I going to get this, it's upside down now, but that's fine, just going to get it out of here. Man, that was hard to get out. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm doing a video. All right. That took a lot more effort than it probably should have, but whatever. Um, here's the manual. Use this manual. It really smells strong. Um... I'm not sure if it smells new or if it smells old. It's kind of a combination of the two. Let's see if I can get it out of this styrofoam now. And this is the Aza Solano. Um, if you want to pick one up, you can uh, time travel back to 2009 and get one probably from Newegg for like, I don't know, $70 or so. But um, It's got eSATA. So that places it right where we want it uh, in the time period. Um, it's got three case fans pre-installed. That's pretty darn nice. Um, some Molex for the uh, huge fan. That's the big selling point right there. So I guess that's technically... Hang on a second. No, it's got... It's got four fans in addition to the side fan. Wow. Alright, I didn't realize it had that many fans. I suppose I'll do the great peel off here. Um, there you go. I mean, it's pretty uns unceremonious. I apologize for that, but yeah, there it is. Alright, so I finally got the case unboxed, and this thing is absolutely incredible. It has a 230 millimeter fan in the side and a 230 millimeter fan in the top of the case. In addition to the, I believe they're 120 millimeter fans, two in the front and one rear exhaust fan in the back. Five fans in total, two different sizes. Whew. 
man. And this thing is pretty robust. It's, it's fairly heavy, um, just on its own. Once I get that gigantic uh, heat sink in there, this thing is going to be heavy. So now it is time to go ahead and get all these parts inside this case. All right, here's the big first opening. Man, look at that gigantic fan in the side of the case. The uh, acrylic panel is a little dirty from, uh, I guess, stuff inside rattling around for a decade. Um, this little box here, ooh. This box looks a little strange, um, but we'll see what's inside of there in a minute. Yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and get started building this case. Alright, now it's time to install this thing. Alright, so included with the uh, Zalman cooler, whatever the model number is, cooler, I showed before, was this <laughs> little bottle of thermal grease, super thermal grease, um, tiny little glass bottle, um, I've never seen that before, <laughs> let's see if we get that focused, and I will show you, if we can here, um, this isn't just any old thermal grease, it comes with a little brush, which I thought was pretty cool, and this stuff is still good actually, uh, surprisingly, or at least you know, it's still liquid, it's not just solid, so I'm actually going to try to use some of this stuff. Um, if it doesn't spread out too well, uh, I might consider otherwise, but it says in the instructions to shake it up, so we'll do that. Here, shaking up there. I need to shake it a little extra since it's been sitting there for well over a decade now. All right. Take a little bit of that and just, uh, let's see, what did it say in the instructions? Let me, let me check. Clear off particles or any residue from the contact surface. Shake the thermal grease well, then apply on the contact surface of the CPU and heat sink base. Um, okay, so we apply it to the CPU and the um, cooler itself. So let's try that out. Now you didn't expect to get your little arts and crafts project out of this video, but here it is. We gently coat the CPU in this thermal grease from circa 2009. And then we go over here and get our massive copper heat sink and do the same to it. So I can only imagine somebody in 2008, 2009 spending a thousand dollars on an Intel Extreme CPU of some kind and getting their 
little Zalman heat sink for it and then getting home and finding out they have to paint it like a preschool art project. I will probably be replacing this pretty soon after but we'll try it see how well it works. Well, I think that's about as much as I feel like putting on there so I'm going to go ahead and try to install this thing. This thing's so big and heavy it's kind of a pain to even try to do it but alright make sure I have it the right way. It'd be just like me to, uh, to not have it the right way. All right, we stick this through there. There are a lot of uh, reviews, by the way, online for these Zalman heat sinks, these older Zalman heat sinks like this, um, saying that the mounting hardware is bad, and it's difficult to work with. go. We got it pretty straight there. Um, again, I'm probably not going to leave that uh, thermal grease on there for very long if I try to do some testing with this. Well, if, when I try to do some testing with this system, um, I'll probably apply something else. But for now, this will do. So now I'm ready to get it in the case over here, lowering the motherboard into the case lining it up and there it is and now my favorite part of a PC build connecting all of these cables fortunately this motherboard has them color coded alright well I got all that junk installed in there and tried to cable manage it as good as I could but you know how it goes um, so I think it's about time to take a break clean some of this junk up and uh, get this Old oh, power supply installed. What did I do with the power supply anyway? All right, so I got the thermal take power supply back out, but uh, unfortunately, it's looking like we're not going to be able to use it, and that is because um, basically it has a ton of Molex connections and nothing else. Um, it has a 24 pin. It has one uh, connection for the CPU on the motherboard, but it doesn't really have anything for graphics cards. So I wouldn't be able to connect the graphics card up. So, well, Goodwill uh, power supply that I was so excited to use. Not going to be able to use it, unfortunately. So I had to go and dig up this old um, Cooler Master 500 uh, watt power supply here. Um, it has a few Molex connections. Uh, the good thing about that other power supply having tons of Molex connections is because all the case fans in this case uh, are Molex. Uh, unfortunately, this only has three Molex connections. This has five case fans, so... Alright, so I suppose I'll go ahead and start trying to install that power supply. Um, this case is actually kind of crazy. It included three little um, cable ties. That's not the crazy part, though. You can actually have up to ten five and a quarter inch bay drives. Um, it has five, ten five and a quarter inch bays on the front. Um, so that's so you can have up to ten um, DVD drives or, or 10 hard drives or whatever you want to have 10 5 and a quarter inch drive base. That is insane. It also has five, as I believe I mentioned, five pre installed fans. Alright, so while I was doing that, I uh, realized that uh, the Molex connectors that are on this case are designed to be daisy-chained together. So uh, you can connect multiple ones 
to one Molex header on the power supply. <sighs> yeah, I mean, you know, I've done nothing but underestimate this case ever since I got it, so shouldn't be a surprise at this point. Um, but, you know, as I said, uh, I wanted this to be sort of a learning experience for myself and hopefully for you as well. Um, so, basically what I've learned so far is that building a PC in 2009 was a pleasure. Um, as long as you could get a nice case like this, I suppose. Um, but, anyway, now it's time to install the hard drive and the graphics card. Hard drive is boring, so I'll probably do that off camera. I'm going to go ahead and install the graphics card now, though. And, uh, if you watch my first video on the graphics card, you'll know it still had this little plastic on it. Look at this. Uh, yeah. That's been waiting to be removed for, what, now 12 or 13 years. So... All right, well, that's about as best as you can expect me to cable manage that. So, it's time to install this hard drive. It's the first time I've had it out of the packaging since I bought it, so well, there it is. Boring old 500 gigabyte hard drive. Uh, true 2009 fashion. In fact, let's see, what's the manufacture date on this one? October 22nd, 2007. So this thing actually... Um, predates most of the rest of the system, so, or all of the rest of the system, as a matter of fact. So, now I'll go ahead and figure out how to install that. If it was that simple for me, just imagine how simple it would be for someone who actually knew what they were doing. Um, so I got the front panel off, obviously, and uh, all you have to do to take one of these things out is just pull this little pin back, or pulley thingy, whatever, on both sides, and pop it out. So of course the reason I'm doing all that, something I didn't mention before, was because I've got to have one of these in my 2009 build, obviously. DVD drive. Um, and uh, yeah, that pretty much speaks for itself. This one is not that interesting. It's a light scribe drive from 2007 and it will fit very nicely right about here. And there we are. Now I get four screws and uh, that will be ready to go. Alright, so now that I've got everything plugged in, uh, it's kind of hard to take the side panel off because of uh, that big whopping 230 millimeter side fan there. Um, but this fan that's on top, you might be able to see it better under here, is also 230 millimeter. The two front fans are 140 millimeter, and the rear exhaust fan is 120 millimeter. So three different sizes of fans on this case. Again, this case is just a beast. But anyway, um, got the graphics card in there, the GTX 260. Uh, that modern power supply is the only um, thing that kind of messes up the retroness of the build. But anyway, got the hard drive in there. i be able to see it a little bit right there. Got my DVD burner. Um, just need another one now so I can pirate some DVDs and that big old Zalman cooler. So now, we're just about ready to go ahead and hook this thing up and see what will happen. Alright, so here goes the first boot attempt. Alright, 
So let's see what we've got here. We've got the Intel Core 2, 2.5 gigahertz. Um, this is an E8400, it's supposed to be 3 gigahertz. But uh, anyway, um, I can feel the draft in the room from all the fans. Um, we've got a DVD drive and a hard drive. That looks good. Well, looks like it's working. Uh, I did something with the computer and it didn't go horribly wrong, so that's reason enough to give this a thumbs up. Um, this video took forever for me to do. Lots of waiting for parts, messaging eBay sellers that don't know what they're doing, uh, Facebook Marketplace, just all of this different stuff. Um, so I'd appreciate it if you gave me some feedback, what you thought about the video, what you thought I could have done better. Um, it's the first time I've built a computer of this era before, so it was a learning experience for me and I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, if you're wondering about the monitor, it also uh, kind of goes along with this. It, it's um, probably from around 2012, 2013. It's not super old, but yeah. Um, anyway, that's all I can think of. Um, the uh, computer seems to be working. It recognizes the drives. Um, we saw the radical splash screen with the uh, monster truck. Uh, very cool. Where did my monster truck box go? This build was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed looking at all the parts, researching, and finding what would work with what and what wouldn't. So um, expect to see some more videos on this build soon on the channel, so subscribe for more. Got more old 2008 computer stuff to look at in the future. So, And be sure to join the Discord so you'll know about my future projects just like this one. Thank you for watching. Stay safe out there. And yes, I did get the back panel on, somehow. <laughs> uh, it's got a little bit of a bulgy-wulgy situation going on there, but it's on there, somehow.